Okay, hello everybody and welcome to some more BTS Europe series. We have Stark versus HWA. HWA has already taken a game off of Stark, so they are up one in the driver's seat. I'm Llama Down Under. I'm going to be joined by PQMZ. How you doing? Pretty good, thanks. So you're saying they're one game up already, yeah? Yeah, yeah. They did... HWA just managed to get, you know, the Enchantress, the DP... The beast monster, and then the, the push, push happened. Strats. Like it, it, they didn't even have a super. They had a clinks, which yes can be super great against towers, but he didn't end up building a deso. He went at uh, uh, just a medallion into a defusal, which was interesting. He never finished the medallion into a solo crest because they just pushed, and it, yeah, there just wasn't much that I felt Stark could do against it. This one's gonna be more interesting because we already have the Io coming out, followed by a witch doctor faceless void. It doesn't look like it'll be the same push strat you're on about last game, at least. That's something. But I'm not the best fan these days of push strat. I think it's, yeah, like, team. fun to watch to an extent, but when every game's just, like, 15-minute, five-man fest, it can get a bit same old, same old. Yeah. But this game shouldn't be that. Whereas the opening picks, it's all fairly, uh... Ten seconds. fight based. There's not much, you know, hard group up push. Five seconds. Now something Could that still I still think... be that though. Fortunately. I think it's really interesting that they go for the Witch Doctor the first pick against the Io. Obviously, Witch Doctor has other benefits and it synergizes well with the Faceless Void. But Invoker was in the pool, another hero that has Sun Strike into Faceless Void. Do you think really the paralyzing cask for the Io Tiny combo is? Better than getting something like the Invoker here? I think Wish like to keep your options a bit more open, and if you wanted to pick the Void, regardless, it's... Either or is fine. Invoker's gonna have a much harder time in the lane against Io Tiny if they want to dual mid against you, so... Probably don't want to... ...yourself open to that. Whereas Wish like to Void, you can do a... ...a lot of different strategies around it, it's very solid combo. It just pretty much adds to every kind of lineup because you've got initiation, you've got sustaining team fights, you've got good damage already from both these heroes. Well, good damage from the Witch Doctor with his ult, and then the Void's good setup. So, and as you said, the Cask is very good against the relocate. Yeah. So Tiny gets BKB, or he blinks away from his Wisp. And up, I like that the Death Prophet ban did come out because I do feel like. She also dominated the lane against the Invoker, despite some rotations from the Invoker's team. But also the Quap ban out. I guess Io and Tiny have to group up, but not maybe the ban out I was expecting after last game. Quap wins the lane against them most of the time. As long as uh, she gets help from her team on the runes, win mid fairly easily against Io Tiny, so that's probably the reasoning. They want to secure the mid lane as much as possible and again it's really good at killing Io regardless of what else is in the team because it's just damage. Now Batrider gets banned out. Trixie did play that last match. Wasn't wasn't fantastic. I do feel like the beast monster that HWA picked for themselves did a much better job in the off lane but that was also that Stark didn't have a great way to lane against it. I wouldn't be surprised if the Invoker's the pickup. I feel like Exor Invoker very strong when you have the Faceless Void. Yeah, they could still go Invoker. Despite the laning stage, they could always safe lane it if that's a problem for them. They're actually They're fairly both... open-ended draft, though. Yeah. So they could go for whatever, like, you get another support here. Scarf wouldn't be completely out of the question. Tree's a little more niche. They want to go more fighting orientated and take a lot of clashes where the heroes just aren't dying. Also going to help against any split push as the game goes on. Because if they don't fully finish a tower when they decide to go right, you can obviously back up. The tree is to me a little weird here. Obviously I think it's meant to be the setup for the Faceless Void Chrono. But it's not someone we often see paired with a Faceless Void. And picking that over somebody else, getting your sure damage into the Chronosphere, 
just really odd. Now, I'm assuming this is an offlane Faceless Void. Some teams have been trying to run it in the one position, but a bit underwhelming, it seems. There's m multiple ways they could do this, I suppose. The Tree Waste Doctor gives them a lot of ways to either set up favorable dual lanes, like if they did Waste Doctor plus one mid and Tree plus one on the offlane, they can set up like winning lanes there. Void does a one-on-one -on -one matchup. He, sh he wouldn't lose to many typical heroes, and even if he does lose for lane, they're probably winning the other two. He also makes it so that like either him or the Void can initiate a fight, and then if the relocate comes in, you have one spell to DC the tiny. That's the only reasons I can see for picking it. I don't think it's a bad pick at all. It's just, as you say, it's a little more creative. Yeah, I mean, something I do love about seeing some of these, both newer, because HWA has, I don't believe they've been playing with this five for very long, and uh, kind of lower, what's it, lower risk games. There's less on the line for this one. You will see more interesting pickups. Bane, something a bit more usual, just coming out of stock. Good way to stop the Witch Doctor from channeling that ult. Also, strong laner. So whatever else stock pairs with this should have a good time in lane. Yeah, and most importantly, he provides some kind of setup for the relocate. If ever he goes around the map on his own, he's got two heroes that can come behind him and suddenly three men gank train. Probably the single best support Ten for that reason. Remaining. Now, there, something that I actually find super interesting is how much time HWA has already burned in the draft well, map, both sides have. Yeah, well, Stark burned everything on that last pick, you know? Um, but before that, HWA, I mean, when a Triant comes out, we're used to seeing it mainly on Gold Black, but for a lot of the teams that pick the Triant, they have a very clear strategy in mind. So it reads to me that HWA were trying to figure out exactly what they wanted to do here. Maybe their captain is trying to convince them of a different strat, saying, hey, this will be cool. They do get the Invoker. So now they have some really good ways to set up for Sun Strikes. Yeah, I like how it's coming together, honestly. They don't first pick the Invoker like you were suggesting. They kind of built their lineup already, and now they're realizing... They have living armor to protect the hero, they can dual lane mid with the Witch Doctor, and suddenly Invoker's not going to have such a hard time if he does go le go mid. Or you could still do some sh safe lane shenanigans or stuff, wh whatever they feel is necessary. Five seconds I don't think they'll have to be too depth with their laning this game though. They're setting up to do pretty well in most of the lanes. But I think it could be a problem though if they wanted to do what I was suggesting Radiant earlier, where back. they left the Void in the safe lane. But Tree and Wish Doctor are, again, fairly good zoning heroes. It's just he's able to keep them there. I think he does his job. If this Invoker is skilled, I think... You know, they go with the Clinks again. So if this Invoker is skilled, I think he can have an okay time against the IO Tiny. But one little overextension and the Tiny throws you back into the IO. We've seen it time and time again. I don't know. This lane... Also, if the Bane comes by, right? The Nightmare onto the Invoker into the toss back. Yeah, it doesn't matter how good you are on a hero, you're going to lose for lane if you don't have supports helping you. Yeah, so I'm a little bit As long as the IO Tiny aren't, like, you know, so, <laughs> like, massively Ten worse than you as a player, but no one here is going to be that bad. Yeah, so... so it's an irrelevant point, unfortunately. I just, I do worry about that pickup. I like seeing the clinks again. They proved that it works. It's someone who can pound a lot of damage into the Chronosphere, but I'm a little bit worried about this Invoker. Now, he is someone who can skill so that he has more defensive options. Do you think... Uh, but I do feel with a Chrono, you have to go Exalt. Either Aura can work. Honestly, you seconds, have the Clinks for a lot of damage. The Exalt just gives the Void and to some extent the Tree a lot more solo kill potential around the map. Personally, I, I think they're set up decently. Clinks is going to melt the Tiny this game if he goes for... even just... A medallion or Desso, either or is going to put the tiny in some bad situations. It's. I don't know, Stark's draft seems a lot more like standardized. They've got. <laughs> you know, the tiny is a one position, Centaur and Darks are very team fight esque heroes that can just go around and make things happen around the map, but. 
I, I like what uh, Klasinki's team have here. Yes, Klasinki, who I also think his name could be pronounced Klasinki technically. Neither here nor there. I, my only worry for... Oh, yeah, I never thought of that. Right? It is definitely, I'm pretty sure it's Klasinki, because I asked them one time. Yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. It's, He's like, it's definitely not Klossy Nikki. I was like, you missed a golden opportunity, mate. Um, the only worry I have about Stock's lineup, obviously it does have some team fight dominance when you look at something like a centaur being able to hoof stomp in, follow up by the vacuum from Trixie, but you're facing a faceless void who, like, and you got a bunch of melee heroes that are just gonna be like, hey, Chronosphere to my face. Yeah, they're gonna have to be careful with, like, how they take the engagements, just for the, that reason. And it might be a little bit easier, especially with a tree as well. Although, what's the cost point on overgrowth? Not instant, but it's fairly quick. Yeah, I know it's not instant, so... I think that, that'll depend on a lot, because potentially jumping in, since I think, you know, three of the heroes on stock are probably going to pick up blinks. It's not uncommon on the tiny, it's not uncommon... It's very needed on the docks here and on the centaur. And so there's potential for you guys all blink in to wombo combo them. You maybe didn't quite catch the tree ant, and suddenly you've just been set up for a three-man black uh, chronosphere. Thirty seconds to yeah, I could, I could definitely see that happening if, as you say, they overextend. But I think this game, the tiny shouldn't look to be going for blink, and like he gets like a really good start early, and he gets like eight minutes when he can still just go around the map killing people. Because, as you said, the centaur's probably going to be the one moving around the map. Bane's going to help as well with that, and he's going to have to play the hard one position here. He's going to want like all the items he can get to give him stats against heroes like Clinks and Invoker. Yeah, agreed. Again, the Clinks, I really like this pickup. We've been seeing it more and more recently. It's something that has been seen at the professional level, and it just feels like a hero that... It's one of the carries that can get a lot done, and also it'll force the opponents to group up a lot more than they want to, or expend sentries at the jungle entrance and so on. And we are going to see duels and... and oh, this okay. is not a lineup that wants to split up. Uh, sorry, that wants to group up either. They want to stay split. They want the Tiny to be farming one lane, and Darkseid to be pushing another, and then the Bane and Centaur to be together to make things happen. Yeah, agreed. And I think that's where it can really take advantage of this, right? If the other team doesn't pick something that has a natural desire to group up, you can see a lot of success with your Kunks lineup. Either way, both sides exchanging some harass in the mid lane. We're seeing Valix trying to harass out the Faceless Void. Now, the Faceless Void, notoriously hard to get out of lane unless you have damage over time. Yeah, but he's gonna get some experience and some farm in this lane, but he's not really gonna ever contest Nempty's farm. Whereas if you look at what the Dax is doing, probably going to make the Clinks miss some last hits under the tower, or at least get a lot more from the lane and be more annoying in terms of farm. I, I don't expect the Void to be able to get like a lot of CS or uh, something as soon as the Bane gets like level two and there's a tiny bit more kill potential after one leap or something. I do agree it that they are better able to, like, Faceless Void isn't hurting Nempy, but can't, Faceless Void can do a lot with just the level 6. Oh yeah, definitely. Like, he'll get his levels this game. No chance of a kill there yet. They, they, they try to go for the Hoof Stomp, and then they do throw out the Double Edge, so they've gotten the Faceless Void down to just a Tango left, but it's never enough against this guy. With that Time Walk allowing him to just backtrack all of the damage in the last two seconds. Very powerful skill. Oh, they're going for the Sunstrike. Boogie walks right into it, but he eats a Fairy Fire. Oh, the auto attacks are enough with Necroman on this Exort. So this mid lane looking very favorable for the Invoker. Yeah, the double range just makes Tiny's life not so good and then He's never going to die if he gets caught out, barring like some really bullshit casks, but the Wisp needs to be really careful. He is squishy. Yeah, and at the, speaking of squishy, Trixie taking a lot of harass up in that top lane. He does pop his salve, but there is a wraparound coming from behind. They... Probably they can't, can't do anything. Yeah, with the surge, it seems like a really difficult kill. And actually, Tree teeping down bottom, seeing if they can cause some more pain there. 
Yeah, I like this idea, because there's level 2 now from top lane, realizing he really can't do anything here. Shix is not going to care if he's there or not. So if he can help the Void secure any more farm than otherwise, and may they can maybe even kill this Bane if they get the body block with the yeah. time walk. They don't no go for it, left. so it's just more pressure on the map, which I like. I don't Bane's think... not allowed to pull, get his level 6, get more effective levels. Doing something, as opposed to leeching your Klinks' experience. Who actually needs levels. It's really difficult right now, I think, to set stuff up with the time walk, since it had that range nerf. So I I think the only way they get a kill is if Alex the Fool isn't nightmared. Obviously, he's getting off another leech seed. There's no mana on the Bane. Bane's turning around, though, for the auto attacks, and R and T. He doesn't get any of those bashes, but still, this Bane is very low. I like what the Iron Tiny are doing as well. Like, the Tiny's always like on this cliff trying to secure the rune, making sure his wisp isn't being contested. I see a lot of people like being a lot more um, greedy with the rune. Like the Tiny won't go help the wisp unless it's like very obvious someone's already there. Oh, the casket yeah, comes out. The Sunstrike's going to be off the mark though. Didn't quite get the coconut bounces they needed. Even if it hits, he's fine. There's a self on the wisp, so... The extra harass really doesn't matter to them. But he has a... He has Bracer, 1000 HP. Regardless of the low armor, he's fine. Now, speaking of game lineups and kind of game plans, do you think for Stark it's just a... Send the... I guess Centaur and Bane? I don't know. How do you... How do you make space for the Tiny here? It's a really weird lineup. Like, I'm not seeing Centaur plus Bane getting kills. I guess you could in a Fiend's Grip, but that takes a while. A Centaur has a lot of damage. Like, the hero's been gone for a while, but... He's not quite as bursty as a tiny, but... Oh gosh, Valix is caught in a bad position. They split up to stop the coconuts, but there it is, the time dilation, and now he doesn't have those cooldowns he needs. Going to use the brain sap to get a little bit more health back, and this gank completely stopped. Sorry, the time dilation. That... That's... I need to drink this tea. <laughs> that is a hard lane to kill. On both sides, it's like... Okay, let, I mean, let's just talk about the lane some. You got a Darkseer who has Surge, you got a Klinks who has Invis, and then in mid, you got an Io and a Tiny, which is going to be hard for the opponents to kill unless the Io's out of position, and a in, an Invoke. He actually doesn't have Ghost Walk. Okay. Yeah, I he doesn't need it, because he's had the Wish Doctor there the entire time. But the levels and quals make him like a lot more sustainable in the lane, which is really important. Normally how Io Tiny wins lanes is... You know, the Tiny will level up his toss, spam toss on you, and then you can't come to CS anymore. Yeah, so... This Invoker, never mind. He might, as you said, the Witch Doctor is always there at the ready, and Witch Doctor is someone who can TP in, even if you're being gone in, and those cask bounces will be good, because usually, if you're going on someone, it's just you and your partner, kind of far up. Creeps might not be as close as you need. And speaking of people who can TP in, the Void is level 6 now, so I would expect him to pick one up and... Maybe look to move around as soon as uh, there's anything being set up from maybe the Bane or the Io Tiny. So, Nemphi here, he is the safe lane farmer on the Centaur. Do you think he should have maybe... He went for Tranquils. I'm expecting him to try to get a very fast blink. Do you ever think there's a reason to go something else if you're kind of that safe laning Centaur? I really don't see a reason for anything else. Blink is just exactly what they want this game. They want... The ability for the center to get his levels, go his farm, move around, and as you were saying earlier, how do they get kills with just the centaur and the bane? They get it by being level seven when everyone else is lower, and your spells are like three quarters of their HP. Yeah, we are. We just... If they hit that window, they'll make space for the tiny. Trixie can even help them out, like just iron shell a centaur who's running at you with his ult or blinking on top of you. It's the multiple damage, regardless of um, tree armor, at like 10 15 minutes into the game, they won't be able to deal with that. Especially like the Clinks, if he doesn't have death pack or he's not on strength shreds, he's susceptible. 
Okay, they're gonna get a toss onto the Invoker. They actually were also going on Trixie, but Necroman, he is looking to be in a lot of trouble, has no Ghost Walk. They need more damage, though. He's getting healed up, and the toss will be enough. Alex the Fool also getting very low. One more IO Ball manages to blow him up, and now MDL, can he get the return kill on Boogie Boogie? Just tethers on over. Nice job there from Valix, taking most of those tower shots for him. So, finally something's starting to happen. I was literally about to comment on one kill in seven minutes. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, as you said earlier, the lanes are all very hard to gank. There, there aren't really the heroes for it until ultimates start coming online or people move away from other lanes. And speaking of ultimates, it's already level 6 on the worst thanks to those kills happening. So this is going to oh. ramp up the action very quickly. Like They can kill the Void now fairly easily. Same thing with Clinks, if ever. The Trixie just walks up to him with dust. They can just relocate on him. Dead. The IO got the solo killer experience on the tree, which allowed that to happen, but this is a really early level 6 on the IO. We normally talk about it being good timing if you can get that 6 before 12 minutes in. Oh, they relocate in and they're gonna blow up the void before he can do anything! Well played. Yeah, suddenly that's a huge threat for everyone to have to worry about, and now they're gonna have to play accordingly. The tree armor's not gonna save you all the time. A, Avalanche is multiple instances of damage, and B, it doesn't matter if you block 100 damage when you're getting overkilled by like 2-300. Yeah. I also did want to point out, I mean, before all of that happened, the game was very close. It still really is. One team fight can turn this around in favor of HWA, but this is such a... I mean, both sides are farming well on their respective cores. Do you think the Clinks? He does feel like a hero who can do maybe a bit more, at least when it comes to damage, than the centaur, if he gets more farm? Or do you think they're okay with this on stock, just betting it all on the tiny? Dark are actually in like a really good position at the moment, just because of the fact, you say, you know, HWA, they need to get team fights to come back. They're never really going to be allowed to get them, because A, things like this are going to happen where oh. the clinks gets picked off due to the dust, like I said, Surgeon on the tiny, he's dead. He's not tanky enough to deal with that. And they can't really group up as five people yet because it's 10 minutes into the game. If they do that, it's very choreographed, very easy to dodge. Like, they can maybe take a tower with the um, level 8 invoker with the Forge Spirits and maybe get a kill with a chrono setup, but you're giving up so much if you're doing that. And namely, the levels are like really hard oh, to deal with. Oh, relocate coming out in mid. There is the nightmare. We talked about this. There's no good way to get around this. They don't manage to get the toss back though, and now it looks like the heals coming out will stop this gank. There are four in middle though for HWA, and this of course sapping their farm. They have to keep rotating people in to deal with these relocates, and they're not getting return kills, so they're not getting any money. They may have spoken too soon. I'm pretty sure Bane going down here. Yeah, they're gonna solo Chronosphere. There's the Sunstrike combo that we're also used to. And RNT puts that first Chronosphere to work. And that's two minutes now where Centaur has his blink. And I wouldn't be surprised if Stark just, you know, you know, say go balls to the wall and start trying to get as many kills as possible. I'm actually incredibly surprised but that HWA took that long to go for a Chronosphere. Oh, the Void was like trying to get as much as he could bottom and... Oh, well, speaking of as speaking much of as he void. can, he's going down. Yeah, and this is why like Starker in such a good position now, because Centaur's one of those heroes that just offers you so much at this stage of the game, and he always has an additional hero there, either the Bane moves with him, or the Io and Tiny can just come in and help out. And no one's gonna survive that, so unless you're baiting the hero with, you know, the Void or the Tree who now has his ult sitting behind him. The hero's probably still dead anyway, and then you need to kill them in 10 seconds before the Aya relocates away, and it's just so many factors that they can't deal with right now. They need to minimize oh. stuff as much as possible. Relocate coming out on mid. There's also Fiend's Grip. They're gonna get the kill on the Invoker and the Clinks. This is, after Lost Game, such a dominant performance from HWA. We're clearly being shown the power of the Io and the Tiny. Unfortunately, I can't comment on the first game, but <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, just a Dyer's clinic, honestly. The, they need to be much more careful in their positioning, like, A, if the Centaur's not on the map or the Bane's not on the map, they really have to be, like, super, super cautious. 
And it's hard to do that now because like both these wards give them so much vision on the start Dyer's side of this ward as well. It's expiring now, but there's nowhere safe for them to farm and they're gonna have to stem like the bleeding for fifteen minutes or so until their cores finally get items. And it's gonna be such a long window because they're gonna give up quite a lot in that window. There's no way they can not have people die for fifteen minutes. Might be able to not lose towers because they have the heroes to keep them alive in the tree and the team fight to scare Stark into overcommitting for them. But they have no way of saving their heroes. The lanes will always be pushed in and to them as well because of the darks here. So if they do anything like Roche, it's very obvious. I'm not Okay, yeah, it's go they're gonna be completely found out here. The Tiny is trying to find someone. This is actually a really nice chronosphere, all things considered. But where's the damage output? The Witch Doctor is still only level 5. A nice meatball comes on through the tree, though, in a lot of trouble. And the Io is still alive. They do lose the Tiny. Trixie going in for more. Io is relocating 5 units to the left. <laughs> That's a bit odd. RNT is gonna be fine. He should be able to time walk up over the cliff. But a 2 for 1... Might actually be favorable for HWA given how far behind they are. Oh, just a little bit in Stark's favor. What do you do? You mentioned you kind of have to lose heroes or towers, but is there any way you can make that more tower based? Because HWA, if they group up now, I think they're done anyway. You know, if you group up this early on, they're going to be sapped so much farm, so much experience. I think a few of their options are. A, not walking in to, like, defend your tower like the Wish Doctor just did. But the Clinks can, like, go into the enemy woods. If you give him one or two wards, he can place... Like, they already have one here. He gets one somewhere around here. He can farm two camps, and suddenly he's not under the vision that's probably in his woods. He, he should know this vision there because of uh, when Stark pushed the tower off, and he might have seen it on the heroes at the time. If he gets some vision there, he can maybe farm there and alleviate the space for the Invoker to farm these camps with Forge Spirits, and he can play slightly further back. But unless there's the smoke, harder for them to get kills that way. And then the supports will just have to play extremely cautious, and the Void will have to be the sacrificial arm. Like, yep. Any farm he goes for has to be like the unsafe farm. He's the least important four on their team. Just all Chronosphere, and maybe he'll get a Vlads and a Blink at some point, but... His teamfight contribution is going to remain very similar regardless of his, of his items, whereas Clinks needs to get items. He has his medallion and Dyer's his light starter items, but he really needs to tank up right now. I wouldn't be surprised if he just goes BKB next. Kind of all in, but I feel like they have to do it. And obviously Invoca needs items. Even just going into Ags at this point wouldn't surprise me. He skipped the Midas entirely because he needs to tank up. He went for the drums and treads. He doesn't have a wand though, which I'm kind of surprised about. I also don't think he got the farm to go the Midas. It was really unfortunate, but... He started out okay, and then suddenly there were, you know, a bunch of ganks. They hit their timings. They got that eight-minute uh, relocate on the IO. Suddenly it becomes very difficult, I think, to justify going a Midas. So they're going to smoke on the lineup of HWA, trying to find something here. The centaur is invisible. That's unfortunate. So, smoke, yeah, smoke is broken and they don't have detection. They so obviously know someone's invisible yeah. because the smoke broke. Relocate okay, coming yeah. in onto the invoker. There's the hoof stomp as well. Tiny avalanche toss. It's just too much. I don't understand why he goes on his own when he knows the hero's impus. It, it could be Bane, it could be Darkseer, but the setup is still there from either of them. Vacuuming them back to the point of relocate is still going to get you killed. That's yeah. really sloppy. And that's what they kind of need to avoid. Right now, like they can't group up with smokes and look to get a favorable engagement. Oh, they do the manage to find out Trixie here, but where is the damage Klaneski, Klansinki, sorry, unable to get the autos off during the Chronosphere, and now a two-man hoof stomp, they're actually gonna find the Clinks as well. The only one they didn't catch there was Alex the Fool, and they might still go for more. This is at least the tier one in bottom, maybe more. Yeah, they can probably just go now, because there's not any chrono to worry about. The tree's probably not going to have the balls to invis into them without the follow-up. The chrono as well, so... 
Could be both towers on top of them taking damage top from the creep wave. Folk is doing the right thing, trying to push out mid. There's very little way they defend this. I just, I'm not sure what you do. Okay, it's only 18 minutes in. They're 17, they're 7.5k behind for HWA. I do not know what you do here. We've seen as well that if this lead gets up to 10k in 20 minutes, statistically, it's really hard for teams to come back from that. It's very rare that they come back from that. This Faceless Void, despite, as you mentioned, he actually got quite a bit of farm in the bottom lane. He has nothing. He doesn't even have his Vlads up. And he, that's because he has to do as much farm as he can to his other two cores. And it's a good thing that he's... It, okay, it's in no way a good thing that he has no items, but it's a good thing he's not like... Sitting in the woods, taking the farm. He's taking the lane farm where there's slightly more risk, where the heroes were just showing. And the way they get back into this game is high ground descent, uh, high ground defense for 20 minutes or so. And it's not even like guaranteed, right? The late game isn't strict. Oh better. gosh, they catch out the invoker again. He goes down, and this is going to be tier two push. As long as they're like farming in these things are going to happen, but you see where the two supports are standing now. They're not doing anything by staying here, unfortunately, now that the invoke is dead. And the relocate's still up, so they can't go bottom on Trixie, but just how little they can do. It, they don't do anything by staying there. They don't do anything by going elsewhere on the map. What they can do is, you know, hit jungle creeps on the other side of the map. I don't know, they're just going to have like 15 minutes of Hoping to God they don't lose, I think. I don't really see a way of them miraculously turning this. Back aren't giving them the engagements. If you fight in the woods, they have the towers to TP into, so... You gotta take what you can. Now, Trixie, he has picked up that Blink Dagger. He already has the mech and the arcanes. This is a rich Doxy. He got so much out of that top lane. They're also going to be seeing the clinks here. Bane wants to go for the Fiend's Grip. But Valix needs Klasinki to come a little bit closer. Doesn't maybe realize that there are a lot of people setting up. There's going to be a Chronosphere. Oh, no, they don't even go for it on Valix. Valix getting the run away. Trixie setting up the wall, but there it is. The Chronosphere onto three. This is the best thing that has happened to HWA. Can they capitalize? Trixie does use that mech, looking like both in a lot of trouble. But no, they're not. Nobody's dead. And they've actually already killed off the tree. Valix still alive. Has a Ghost Scepter. 20 minutes in on the Bane. RNT out of mana. He doesn't have the Time Walk now. He uses the Time Dilation but Tiny wasn't caught in it. Tiny going to go down, though. That's something good, and Nemphi gets hit by those coconuts again. Isn't able to blink away because they keep disabling it. So they do get something on the lineup of HWA. That's pretty good. Four. Yeah, they got, they got more gold from that team fight, but they blew everything. Well, like, the fact they're getting some experience, they're getting some gold, and their cores are alive, and... They feel safe to do something for the next few minutes. Unfortunately, I think Roche, as long as Stark know about it, isn't going to work for them. This is probably going to backfire very heavily. Yeah, we're going to be seeing the hoof stomp coming out. Actually, unable to cast it. He wants this invoker. He finally hoof stomps him up. And as you talked about, plus the ion shell, people just fall to this center. They're going to get their D wards out. Io has a gem, and they can't actually take Roshan on Stark, but... You know. I'm sure they could with enough time, but in how much time you want to invest into that as opposed to time you want to spend pushing this lane out, pushing this lane out, and applying pressure on the map. They don't need Roche to be taking team fights right now. If yeah. anything, it's just like clickbait for HWA oh, to keep no. trying to go for. Yeah, they even relocate in for the Treant on the top lane. Something we haven't touched on is the AoE gold distribution. Obviously, when you have a Tiny and an Io, the the way AO... Okay, never mind. We're, we're seeing the Witch Doctor die. So we'll just talk about AoE gold later. They... Oh! He almost walks it away, but the vacuum kills him. Dying to a vacuum. It's, uh... It's not great. And, and they're trying to go in now, but the, it's still like... They have a Chrono. And they have a gem. They're gonna actually catch quite a few on the Chrono. But the balls are hitting RNT, almost doing more damage to him than Boogie. And Boogie... He's getting away with the Ghost Scepter Fiends grip onto RNT coming out, and they are just going to pound into him. They do not need their spells. Time dilation or no. 
Dyer's Those are just the kind of things they need to be limiting. It's so tempting though, when you see four heroes there, it's like, invoke a combo, suddenly, it just looks so juicy, right? And they're in desperation mode, they don't have the same ability to look at the map and probably think 20 minutes ahead. They're thinking, what can we do now to get back into the game? Fortunately, that window is just that small, because of how badly the early game went on their end. Do you think this was all on the... taking ancients. Do Not sure think... if HWA stack. Oh, okay, there's gonna- Oh! Coke- Oh, never mind. Okay, I thought the Coke- the paralyzing cask saved his life, but then Tiny said, Hey, uh, I will deter- I will go stop doing the Ancients. It looks like it was only a double stack, because there are only two big creeps left, so... It was triple, I think. There was, okay. uh, Thunder Hides. Thunder Hides! We got a week! Thunder Hides! Um... Tiny has his Ags, 23 minutes in, and a Blink Dagger. He has 500 GPM. The next best- oh, okay, he's also gonna get some more by killing off Faceless Void. And there's nothing you can do! There's no time to time warp here! There is time to not chase a Bane, though. So, the, you, you can tell they're a tiny bit tilted with their decision making right now. There's no way that's going to work. And if he lives- uh, his crown is still down, but maybe they don't feel Dyer's confident taking the tower. They're basically just getting two towers to free here. And there's not going to be a trade. Okay, they're attack. actually going to get the my top, but it clinks his uh, life. Ooh. Not ideal. Yeah, and now they're going to come back in onto middle. They will have folks coming in, Trixie. Oh, he's taking the full death ward. I don't think you survived this one. And they get a big pick off there on the docks here. Yeah, that, that's something, but it's still, like, the cost of your tier 2... Also, the they're losing more nine. people. They, they lose the Witch Doctor. And this Invoker, he's sitting on a Blink and Drums, right? We're so used to Invoker having a dominant performance, especially an Exhort Invoker who normally goes for the Midas bit. There's just nothing you can do here. No, there is very, very few safe spots on the map. Even your base isn't that safe once it gets uh, reached by like the tier 2's going down. Dyer's top tower is under attack. I think unless Stark make a huge mistake, this th this game is it's done. We're uh, not meant to call they, it they, but they can't they can't go high ground that easily, that's the thing. Tiny needs Bryce he's going Hyperstone, I, I would have expected him to just go Manta because of the green. It's also very good against the Cask on Witch Doctor. And it's also like pretty good sieging, but if he just goes Moonshard or AC, it peaks earlier. It, it feels better to play, I think. But it, it does give HWA like a way back into the game if they lock the Tiny down because he doesn't go Manta, doesn't go PKB. Now... This is also a ridiculously farmed IO. We don't get to see this too much on IOs, you know, having the same net worth as an Invoker. But he's gone for the Sand. I'm assuming a Heaven's Halberd for the Clinks. What surge is this? Uh, SNY carry Wisp. <laughs> hey, I actually think since he doesn't have Tone Radius for auto attacking, that there's some potential there, but not nearly as much as a Tiny. Nah, uh, if you go carry Wisp, you go Armlet all day every day. Okay. Um, but have you I... not seen the Guardian videos? Uh, is Guardian the guy who's like 8k MMR with IO, but all he plays is IO? Uh, I don't know what his MMR okay. is. But There's he, a guy on the leaderboard. He used to jungle Wisp. Oh, Jungle Wisp. There's some guy who plays carry IO and is very, very high MMR, but my understanding is only the IO. There's going to be a nice pick off again. These wards doing so much work, but maybe the tiny has overextended. Never mind. On the back lines, they're killing off Clan Klasinki, and they relocate away the tiny. Nice wall dropped, forcing them to walk through it if they want to escape. Fiend's grip onto Alex the Fool, who was getting so close to his Aghanim Scepter. Tree going to go down, and that's the tier two. That's just... Can't rely on Chronosphere's lockdown when the Tiny's on the edge of it. He has to be like smack bang in the middle. Even then you can get him out if you position your hero correctly so that the tether doesn't move you, but it just latches. What I mean? And it's probably tier 3 as well. Yeah. Maybe even Rax, because without Chrono there's no setup. I think Tree's not going to be able to just walk into you. There's way too many ways for them to stop you. MP giving them a little bit of a scare back there, but as you said, that is Rax. They probably want to rotate and finish off the tier 2 top, or take the Aegis. 
But they have plenty of options on stock. They have... The world is their oyster. Yeah, they, they just need to chill, spend their money, keep doing what they're doing. There's no reason to... Overextend, go Radiant's for a second Rex. Under attack. Yeah, Poor they... Void, man. Like, he, he feels so unsafe that he sits around the Roshan pit on the cliff. <laughs> um. Ping, ping, ping. Yeah, they, they were upset about the items. Now, something... <laughs> um... They just used the Triant ult, the overgrowth, and also yeah, that smoke uh, was seen. This is the Hal Mary. They're probably you know, pretty pissed how this game went. Top tower is under attack. And like this smoke is horrible as well, because look what they're doing. They're also split. The Wish Doctor walks up high ground on his own. Like his team wasn't even with him. This <laughs> They do have not what you want to see. They have RNT in a great place to land a good Chronosphere. Tiny is just going in ham. He's actually going to take a little bit of damage here. He has to be careful. Alex the Fool has been stunned up. There it is. The two-man Chrono. They've got the Io. They've got the Tiny. But the Death Ward, I think... No, it was immediately stopped by Trixie. And now they will be losing the Clinks. They will be losing that Witch Doctor. Trixie being very aggressive. Just wanting to get himself some Doctor. Oh, oh, it's GG. They dropped boots. Oh, and Trixie destroys it. So... Both games really one-sided so far. Hopefully game three is more even, but I'm not really sure what to expect. I honestly think both of these games are really on draft. I don't think that was so much on drafters' play. Just as soon as things started to go badly, it just escalated and WA really didn't show any kind of thought into how they're going to deal with what's going to come. There was no foresight, there was honestly just autopilot Dota on their end. They, they itemized in certain ways to try and tank up, like the Invoker made a few smart item choices going for the creds early, so it wasn't such an easy target, but it didn't amount to anything, and how they played was just not up to scratch when they fell behind, which is what a lot of teams suffer from. Yeah, unfortunately... They didn't take this one, but for W or HWA, they have another game in them. They can regroup, think about it. As you said, a lot of trouble in the laning phase. We'll see what the next one holds, folks. Once again, I'm Llama Down Under. I've been joined by PQMZ. He doesn't have social media, but you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Twitch as Llama Down Under. And let's get you all into that game three. Peace out.